The group started with Chris. Chris had the initial idea to put the group together. I moved to Orlando right out of high school, and I wanted to pursue music. I'd had this a cappella group, and I remember my buddy Charlie. He said he wanted to introduce me to Lou because Lou was looking for another group, and he thought that my a cappella group would be perfect for him. And at that point, I'd known Lou had the Backstreet Boys. You know, they were out doing it, and I was like, if this guy thinks, you know, he can help me out in any ways, I'll meet him. And so right away, I was totally in. Chris Kirkpatrick had the idea, but Lou, Lou backed him and made this happen. The first band that I brought to Lou, you know, a couple guys would quit. Now Lou is going to dip into the pot of gold that Disney has created with this phenomenal cast of talented young people. The all-new Mickey Mouse Club of 1993 had several future superstars in his cast. Yo, what's up? Justin Timberlake, Carrie Russell, Britney Spears, J.C. Chazek, Christina Aguilera, and Ryan Gosling. Justin and Britney even performed together, singing I Feel For You. Despite all the talent on that show, Disney pulls the plug on it. When Mickey Mouse Club was canceled, I found out about it and then learned that Justin Timberlake moved home to Memphis. And then when we called him, moved him down. The first thing Justin suggested was one of his friends from the Mickey Mouse Club, JC. And so Justin kind of brought JC into the mix. They, as a group, then went and they found Joey Fatone, who was playing the Wolfman at Universal Studios. So they got four guys and they're one guy short. They realized they needed a bass singer, so Justin Timberlake's vocal coach said, I know this guy in Mississippi, and it was Lance Bass. My love of music really began singing in my church. In Mississippi, no one ever dreamt of being a successful musician. It just was kind of out of the cards for someone like me. But one day, when Lance was a sophomore in high school, he got a telephone call that would change his life. It was a huge day in my life when I got the call from uh, Lou Perlman and Justin Timberlake. They were like, we'd like to fly you down to Orlando. And I thought that was amazing because I've never even been on a plane before. Uh, so I, I arrive at baggage claim. There's 14-year-old Justin Timberlake looking real cool and sly. <laughs> then you have Lou Perlman, and they pull up in his Rolls Royce limo. And that's how I'm introduced to this whole world. When you meet Lou, you immediately trust him for some reason. He had this very jolly personality that you just felt like he was family. And from the second that I met him, I really loved him. He just was like this fatherly figure that we never had any worries around him because, you know, financially, he was the money guy. I mean, everywhere we went, he was like, oh, I'll buy this, I'll do this, I'll do this. My mom didn't want me to do the group because she didn't know exactly what this was, if I was going to be taken advantage of. But she saw how excited that I was, so she had to let it ride. Lou was always painting the picture of a perfect life. He tells your mom, oh, you're a teacher now, but a year from now, you won't be teaching anymore. You'll be totally taken care of. You just believe that. Now, with the support of the parents, the hard work begins. Perlman's gonna put them through the paces just like he did with the Backstreet Boys. It was so hard, and it really took us months to focus on that and learn how to dance without being out of breath. I used to come watch and be there to make sure they're getting the best training, that they're getting pampered with every possible need. That was what I did. So the first show we ever did was a showcase we did at Pleasure Island, and we just did some of the songs that we had. And somehow word gets back to Johnny Wright that Perlman has a new boy band. So I called Lou, and I was like, you have another boy band I don't know about? He goes, no, 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 no. He goes, this kid, Chris Kilpatrick, he wants to put a band together, and he just comes to me every once in a while to ask for some advice, but I got nothing to do with that band. It was always like a secret. Like, everything was, don't tell anybody about this. Don't say that I'm involved with you. Don't say that you really even know me. It just seemed so shady. In an effort to make himself look even more accomplished, Perlman starts his own record label, Transcontinental. 
I mean, we had Lou Perlman's Transcontinental Records, but it was an indie label and you needed a major label to, you know, be your distributor. Every record exec out there turned us down. They're like, eh, eh, nothing like this would ever work in America. This is way too cheesy. But remember, boy bands remain really hot in Germany. So I called Lou and I said, I know you say you have nothing to do with NSYNC, but if you can find him and we can sign him, I can get him a deal right now. So within two hours, he had me on the phone with Justin's parents. I found them, you know. It always amazes me that NSYNC took almost the exact same route <laughs> to fame as Backstreet Boys. They too went to Europe. They too went to Max Martin to record. Max Martin writes a song for them, which is called I Want You Back. And then they came out with a second single called Tearing Up My Heart. When the single hit, it blew up and we started doing these shows. One of them was called Vet and Doss. Tearing up my heart when I'm with you. But when we are apart, I feel it too. Not long after, NSYNC will finally break in America. Interestingly enough, because the Backstreet Boys turned down a Disney concert special. For some reason or other, Backstreet was too busy or couldn't do it, so Disney said, hey, would you guys be interested? And we're all like, yes. You may recognize this next song, because it was our first hit single. Are you ready? The Disney Channel concert really changed our career. It's hard to say. It was incredible, and that one gig right there, to me, is what made us in America. And the Disney Channel plays that concert over and over and over and over again. Backstreet fans were mad. They're like, oh, we can't have another group like this. Almost from the beginning, lines were drawn. Some girls loved Backstreet Boys and hated NSYNC, and some girls loved NSYNC and hated Backstreet Boys. They can move like nobody else. They're better than Backstreet. Backstreet's nothing compared to them. I love you, you bro! When Backstreet Boys found out that Lou was the manager behind their greatest rival, they were outraged. Lou knew what he was doing because, as he always said, you have Coke and you have Pepsi. This was not the Cola Wars, it was the boy band wars. But Perlman won't be content with just two huge bands. Essentially, Perlman wants to create a kind of pop music factory. I'm very happy and blessed with all the artists that we have. It's been great, and we have more things coming. But as Perlman's building his empire, his stars are starting to get restless. You're so successful that you forget to even look at your finances and realize, oh wait, we're not getting paid. Where's the money going? And who is seeing the money? Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.